Let's talk about inference to the best explanation, abbreviated IBE. So in an inference to the best explanation, we begin with facts in need of, explana in need of an explanation. And then we canvas, what do you mean canvas? What do I mean canvas? Look around for? Look at or examine or look for. Uh, ideally, you'd look at all the plausible potential explanations of those facts, right? So we begin with facts needing exp in need of explanation. We canvas or examine the plausible potential explanations of the facts. And then we select one explanation as the, quote, best explanation by standards for what makes one explanation better than another. And then we conclude, so that explanation selected as the best is what? Probably true. So um, maybe uh, you live in a house with two other people and they're both vegetarians. Well, we better have three other people. So maybe you live in a house with three other people. Two of them are vegetarians and one eats meat. And uh, you come home and the leftover meatloaf is gone and you were going to eat it for a midnight snack. So the fact in need of explaining is why is the leftover meatloaf gone from the fridge? And uh, there's three possible explanations. Why roommate one ate it, roommate two ate it, roommate three ate it. But if two of the roommates are vegetarians, it's unlikely they would have converted to, what is it if you're not a vegetarian? Omnivore or carnivore. Okay, they, maybe they converted to... That would be a really good meatloaf. Probably. Carnivorianism. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's unlikely. The most plausible explanation and the best explanation is that the one that's the meat eater ate the meatloaf and that the other of the other three and that would be the best explanation and then you would conclude that that's probably what happened that would be an inference to the best explanation so in an inference to the best explanation we begin with facts that need explaining and then we decide what to infer from the facts by thinking about what would best explain them this is the type of reasoning that's used in court cases all the time, isn't it? We have facts in need of explaining, and then the prosecutor makes an argument that the best explanation is that the defendant did it. Then the defense tries to um, cast doubt on that explanation or suggest alternative explanations. But what makes one explanation better than another? Are you asking me? Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I think there's a couple ways of trying to approach that answer. Um, it's going to be contextual in some cases if there's a, a line of reasoning where it could be deductive or inductive to make one of the explanations a better explanation. Then it's that line of reasoning that we'd want to be looking at, not just inference to the best explanation. The best mm -hmm. explanation might be an argument from analogy, mm -hmm. or it might be an induction. It could be a number of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's just say that we don't have a lot of evidence for one or the other. What we might do is simply look for the best explanation, all else being equal. There might be enough, same amount of evidence for both or for all three. I'd want the evidence to actually be able to answer the questions. In this case, your three people all could eat the meat, all could mm -hmm. eat the meatloaf. So I suppose it's all equal in terms of ability to, or just adequacy to answer the question who ate the meatloaf. Mm -hmm. I'd also want um, the uh, hypothesis, the explanation to kind of fit the facts. In this case, the two vegetarians don't fit the facts as well as the meat eater. Mm -hmm. They could have eaten the meatloaf, mm -hmm. but uh, I want a hypothesis to fit facts well. I want a hypothesis to be fruitful. 
that is to be able to be testable. All else being equal, I would prefer a hypothesis that I can test. In principle, I could look inside the belly of each of these people to see if they or you could, or if they're truthful people, or you I could, could ask, ask them, them, and you could kind of judge by their yeah. answers if they're telling yeah. the truth. So hypothesis, it's if it's impossible to test an hypothesis, it makes it an awkward thing to work with. Uh -huh. uh, I want the hypotheses to be internally coherent. That is, we want them no contradiction inside. inside yeah. Uh, fitting the fact, external uh, simplicity. I, uh, ideally, I, if I have two or three hypotheses, I'd want the one that appeals to the fewest number of strange entities or has uh -huh. the least number of complexities. Not because I'm not smart enough to understand a complex hypothesis or explanation, but if you have an explanation that has three parts, an explanation that has five, which one's more likely to go bad, all else being equal? This has five ways to go bad, this one only has three. Uh -huh. And in this case, all three of these explanations seem to be equally simple. Yeah, they have, each have one part. What makes the vegetarian the best hypothesis, the best explanation is... You mean it fits the, the, the meatarian? The meatarian. Meatarian. Yeah. And what makes the meatarian uh, the best explanation is because it fits the facts the best. Yeah, right. Meat eaters eat right. meatloaf. Vegetarians don't eat meatloaf, right. usually speaking. Yeah. So, so um, we want our explanation to fit the facts. And we might also put this in there. I think it's along the lines of what you're saying. Um, if one explanation explains more of the facts than another, in, in that sense it's better. Mm -hmm. uh, and if an explanation is simpler than another and everything else is equal, it's better. And one way to define simplicity for explanations is to say that one explanation is simpler than another if it refers to fewer entities or postulates or mm -hmm. supposes or hypothesizes fewer entities. A good example would be the uh, the shoe prints left at the crime scene at the O.J. Simpson murder scene, or in the, in the O.J. Simpson case. You had a whole bunch of shoe prints left at the crime scene, and one hypothesis would be that two different individuals wearing identical shoes left all those prints. So let's say there were 40 prints. One hypothesis would be two individuals each left 20 prints, but they had identical shoes. Another hypothesis would be three individuals left those prints. They all, those shoe prints, and they all had identical shoes, size and everything. Uh, so this, the hypothesis that one individual left all 40 of those shoe prints is simpler than the hypothesis that two individuals left them mm -hmm. because it postulates one criminal instead of two. Two is simpler than three because it postulates two criminals having left the prints instead of three. So we would, if, if, if all else is equal, we would prefer the hypothesis that says one individual left all the prints than the hypothesis that said two left them, two people with identical shoes and so forth. Okay, so um, there are standard criteria for what makes, makes one explanation better than another. Simplicity, uh, uh, consistency, consistency with external evidence, uh, and these are all discussed in the course material, but we do have s standard criteria for, for deciding when an explanation is better than another. When we do have an explanation that seems to be better than all the competing explanations, and we've looked at all the plausible ones, we have pretty good reason to think that probably that explanation is true. And so this is called an explanatory argument, or an inference to the best explanation. It's also called explanatory reasoning. And it's also sometimes called theoretical reasoning.